they may split the saves going down the, down the stretch. I don't think there's any reason to get rid of them. How about the Marlins situation? Uh, they traded Garcia. Uh, Dylan Floro, Anthony Bender. I've actually picked up Anthony Bender in like three leagues. Uh, do they go back to Anthony Bass, who we had on the show here, beat the shift? Um, any Anybody that you're buying? I think Anthony Bass is the cheapest. He'll be available almost for free. And I think they may go back to him because he was the closer to start the season. They may try to establish him again at the end of this year. So going into next year, he can be the closer. Anthony Bender, they already used as an opener for a game. So I can't see him going back to closer. Because, I mean, the Marlins, I think it was two years ago, they used Ryan Stanek as an opener for most of the season. And he even got some save opportunities. I don't see the same thing with Bender. Um, I think they use him in high leverage situations. But I can see them going back to Anthony Bass. All right, Cubs. They traded Ryan T- Tepera, uh, so he's not going to be the guy. Rowan Wick. I'm assuming now's the time to pick up a lot of Rowan Wick. Well, he's still on the IL. You don't know exactly when he's True. coming back. So I think if Kimbrel stays, obviously he's the closer. Um, but if he goes, I think it may, may be Rex Brothers. He's closed before a little bit when he was with Colorado. It was him and and. Um, What's his name? The other he, there's another guy in Colorado. There's always a committee in Colorado. So Rex Brothers, do, Brothers does have the ability to close. So I think he, even though he's a lefty, I think they'd go with him. Yeah, I think if you ha- don't have problems with your lineup and you can spare a spot, Rowan Wick is going to be a cheap option to hold for a week or two more uh, and see what you got. I would spend a dollar on Rowan Wick. Um, all right, what about the uh, situation now? Uh, Pirates. Uh, this may be a moot point by now, but uh, if if you're in a <laughs> If if you somehow have David Bednar available and they trade Richard Rodriguez, he's the guy. We've been talking about him quite a bit. Uh, twin situation. Um, who, who do you have here? Is is Hansel Robles the guy to throw stuff? Tyler Duffy? Uh, who Who's the guy for you? I think it's, it's going to be Hansel Robles unless he's traded. And I think Hansel Robles will probably be traded. The most logical guy to be traded was Taylor Rogers, but he just went on the injured list with a sprained finger, so he's not probably not going to get traded. Although Danny Duffy, who is on the IL, was just traded earlier today to the Dodgers, so you never know what's going to happen. But I think Hansel Robles is a closer until he's gone from there. You still have Alex Colomay sitting there. He could hypothetically still close. So I wouldn't put all my money on Tyler Duffy, though. All right, Texas, uh, assuming Ian Kennedy gets traded, you no longer have uh, Jolie Rodriguez. Who's the guy for you? Is it Spores in the bullpen? It's it's Spores, but I think I'd stay away from that situation also because I think it'll be a little bit by committee because there's no real proven closer there. All right. Any other situations to uh, talk about uh, with changing hands from this? Um, I think we should also mention, I guess, Cincinnati. Cincinnati's still in the race. I mean, who do you have there? Do you have Amir Garrett, who has looked good sometimes, bad sometimes? Heath Hembry. They just got Michael Givens. They have Sean Doolittle now. Who do you think they go with? Michael Givens, uh, being that they traded for him um, and they really don't have a guy. I think Givens is a guy to throw a dart on. Okay, I, I, I tend to agree with that. And there's another situation that's going on in Arizona. Yes, they're the last place team. Yes, they're trading away everybody. But the last few games, Joaquin Soria has pitched the eighth inning, and Tyler Clippard has been getting the save opportunities. Do you spend on Tyler Clippard? Goodness gracious. Uh, wasn't Tyler yes. Clippard on the Mets' uh, 2015 uh, postseason run? Yes, he was, and he's and well, yeah, Joaquin Soria is is, is in, I guess she's in the same age range. Oh, so man. I mean, either one of them. I mean, who who do you who do you have there? I I go with Soria, but uh, I mean the Diamondbacks stink. So um, you know, I, I I'm probably staying away from that situation altogether. I'd rather bet on one of the other guys, even even if it's less of a guarantee. I'd rather go with uh, the Rowan Wick or the Anthony Bender rather than play in the Diamondback situation. I agree, and I think both of them will prob- probably get traded before the trade deadline. So, Yeah, it's possible. All right, uh, let's do a pitcher preview. That's where we talk about um, are there a good matchup for next week that you want the pitcher, a two-start week, or now that it's almost August, uh, unbelievable it's almost August, uh, could be a future two-start pitcher. That would mean a, a pitcher that is slated to be not two-start this week, but two-start the following week, and on the waiver wire you can probably get him for free, whereas next week if people are struggling to get – Anybody they can with two starts, he would be. They would cost money. So free is better. Uh, if you can roster the guy and save him for a week, it's always better to do it first. Any uh, pitcher preview? Any uh, any pitchers you want to mention? 
Yeah, I got two of them, actually. I got Adrian Hauser. He's only 21% on the CBS. You've got two start lined up right now, Pittsburgh and San Francisco. I like the Pittsburgh start a lot. Um, he's only pitched a total of 13 innings in his, in his last three outings, but he's got a 2-7 ERA, only nine strikeouts and eight walks. So I don't like those ratios too much, but he is playing for a first-place team, so there's a possibility that if they don't add to that rotation by the, t- by the time this airs, um, I think he will get the shot, and I think he's a guy worth owning to try to get a win. Another guy to mention is Michael Waka. Yes, the former Met. Um, he's with uh, Tampa right now. He is playing Seattle and at Baltimore. That was a pretty, those are pretty good matchups. His ERA in the last couple starts was 4.5, which is not that great. But he's got 16 strikeouts and 14 innings playing on a team that's doing very well, the Tampa Bay Rays. He's only 13% owned in CBS, so he's another guy to watch for. Yeah, and being that they just traded Rich Hill to the Mets and they just traded Castillo out, um, I, I would assume that they would want starters to go that extra inning if possible, uh, and that always helps, uh, you know, it, for fantasy. And Seattle, Baltimore, that's that's you know a fantastic. It doesn't get much better than that. So if you if you're ever going to roster Michael Waka this year, it would be this coming week. Uh, those two guys are on my list. I'll just throw two guys out. Uh, the, the list is really bad this week. I, I really don't see picking up pitchers here. I, I think I'd go for speculative closers this week instead. But uh, Dane Dunning, I, I, I like his stuff. He's playing the Angels and Oakland this year. And Jordan Lyles playing the Angels and Oakland as well. Um, yeah, two, two guys you might pick. And uh, here's another Texas guy, future two-star pitcher, Colby Allard. He's been very good at times, not so good at other times. But uh, two starts at Seattle and versus Oakland. Pick him up now. He'll be free. Uh, and just ride him while you can. All right. Yeah. This is this is the time to get the two star pitchers because if you do this too late, you're not going to get the stats you need because September, a lot of times they start bringing up more people and they'll get less playing time. So you got to get them now when they're hot. Yeah. You know, and in terms of strategy, you know, it, we we don't really advocate going with the two star pitchers so early because you can get gombered by somebody. Um but uh you know, at, at, when you get down to to the nitty-gritty with the last uh 8 weeks of the season, you see we are in categories, and you see which means more. Is it uh, wins? Is it strikeouts? Are they bunched up? Do they have a high gradient? Or do you see uh, the ERA, is that bunched up? Because if you're not at a point where you can gain a lot in ERA, or if you actually have a great lead, you're, you're much better off starting that two-star pitcher, even if he was a crappy player, to get that maybe win or pick up a couple of strikeouts. Um, so you really need, for any of these things, like we're telling you blanket advice, but it's very context-dependent. You have to look at your league situation and always go for the the categories that are required in a bunched-up situation, the high-gradient, the low-gradient ones where either you have a, a lead or you, uh, you know, you're trailing by too much. Those You don't need those statistics as much and trade from one to the other. Um, do, do you suggest to do that, Ruvain, on, on the batting side as well? Like if you have uh, a big stolen base lead, you're up by, I don't know, 12 stolen bases on the next guy, um, and, and you know, you're bunched up in power, is it worth sitting, I don't know, Ramiel Tapia for, um, you know, uh, just some R- R- Randall Grichuk, uh, you know, somebody who's going to hit power and not much else? Uh, you know. Well, well, I wouldn't use Ramiel Tapia as an example because he scores a lot of runs also. Yeah. So I wouldn't necessarily use him. But if you could just let's say you're going to use um, a player like Dylan Moore, who will either get on base a couple times, steal a couple bases, hit a home run now and then, but you mainly have him and you got him at the at the auction or draft for stolen bases. If you want to play him now, I think now's the time to do it because this is also the time when people are looking in the waiver wire trying to find those stolen base guys. If you have the abundance of stolen bases, I wouldn't necessarily sit them. I'd even try to trade them for a need that you have on your team because the trading deadline for a lot of leagues is going to be either this week or next week. And if you have that stolen base guy, look, in the, look at the standings for stolen bases. Who needs the stolen bases? What do they have that you could use? Offer that trade. What have you got to lose if you had that 12 stolen base lead? Yeah, fair point. And yeah, my, my example was not the greatest. I just thought about it very quickly. But yeah, the point is that, um, you know, hitting side, it works as well. And obviously, if you can go in the trade route, that always is, is well. Uh, injury update, Ruvain. Uh, as we head into the trading deadline, what do you have for us? 
Okay, first of all, we'll start with Jared Walsh. He was actually placed on the IL with a right intercostal strain. We don't know how bad is it, it is just yet. The earliest he can be activated will be August 6th. Phil Gosselin, Matt Theis was were called up. Those are guys who can fill in at first base um, for the Angels. Pete Fairbanks, another guy who was in that bullpen for, ta- for Tampa, just was placed on the IL, so that opens up spots for other people to get saves. This is the second time he's on the IL with shoulder inflammation. That's not a good thing, so we'll see how that works out. Some updates. Um, Francisco Lindor, the GM for the Mets, actually gave an update saying that he's going to be out for about another four to five weeks, so make sure you have a good uh, replacement for him. Um, you have Mike Trout. Um, the rumor is, or they were saying, that there's a possibility that when he comes back, which will be hopefully in the next week or two if everything plays out properly, and when he comes back, he may actually play a corner outfield spot or and or DH. That's a very good possibility and have Shohei Otani play the outfield a little bit more. So that's something just to watch for. Luis Severino is going out on a rehab assignment starting next week, so he's a guy to watch for. Chris Sale, he has two more rehab starts, and then he, as long as everything goes well, he will be activated. Jack Flaherty, he's on a rehab assignment also. He will be back as soon as they get him up to about 70 to 75 pitches. His last rehab start when he went about 30 pitches. And I have to mention this guy, your favorite, Chris Archer. He's currently rehabbing. I think he had thoracic outlet surgery. Um, He's had four rehab starts. If he's available, he's only 17% owned in CBS right now. In those four starts, 279 ERA, .93 whip, a 10.2 K per nine, .9 homers per nine. It's only over nine and two-third innings. I understand that. But that's very un-Chris Archer-like. And if he's available... He's on the raise. They're going to oh, probably boy. need him at some point. He will come up, and he may play a role later on in the season for the Rays. Goodness gracious. Uh, you can't get me to pick up Chris Archer. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm Chris Archered out. Well, if you have so many injuries on your team, you may need to. <laughs> I'm going to add one waiver pickup, and this is breaking news right now. Uh, but uh, I would pick up Alcides Escobar. He might be the starting shortstop for the uh, Washington Nationals. Uh, just got word of a trade: Max Scherzer and Trey Turner going to the Dodgers. So pick up. I really, f- it really feels like 2015 now. See, does Escobar on a on a team starting on a team oh again? It's ridiculous. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, but yeah, he's. I mean, he's going to score some runs, steal a couple occasional base. Um, he'll get playing time. I mean, they got to play somebody out there short. Um, That's true. There well, you go. they do have a. Pro- they, they also called up the prospect Luis Garcia. If yeah, he's available, yeah. he's one of their top prospects. He's going to come up, and he's a guy that you can pick up also. All right. Yeah. Good suggestion there. All right. Well, uh, you know, once again, it's been a great episode. Uh, we got Bill James. We had uh, deadline closers, waiver wire, uh, so much action packed stuff in this episode. Um, but uh, it is now time to go. So before that. Uh, Ruben, why don't you just tell us uh, where we can find your work and read your stuff and uh, all things Ruben Guy. You can follow me on Twitter at MLB Injury Guru, where I tweet out injury updates on a daily basis, who next guy up, and how long they should be at based on their injury and based on my medical experience. I also have a weekly article on Rotoballer discussing these injuries that I discussed today, as well as every other injury, almost every other important fantasy-relevant injury, and the next guy up. All right, and I'm um, Ariel Cohen. You can follow me on Twitter at ATCNY. Read my stuff over at Fangraph Sportsline and Rotoballer. And, of course, you can listen to me right here on the Beat the Shift podcast presented by Fangraphs each week. All right, so we've got two months left in the season. Uh, time to kick it into high gear in your fantasy baseball leagues. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Beat the Shift podcast presented by Fangress. Follow us on Twitter at beat underscore shift underscore pod.